Yeah, it's cold. This morning, we're climbing up Saddleback here, which will be a lot of above treeline hiking. Luckily today we have really nice weather, but I just looked at the forecast and it looks really bad. <laughs> it's just like rain for the next week, basically with one day of sun, possibly. So I don't know what that means, but if it's this cold and raining, that's really gonna suck. One hard thing about all of this climbing paired with all of this cold weather is the constant layering and delayering going up and down mountains or when it's windy or when it's really cold for some reason. Whew. So that's where we camped last night and that's where we came from somewhere. Nice spot to pick blueberries. Ma'am, can you tell us, how are the blueberries tasting today? Um, they're tainted, but great. Great. Ooh. Creme brulee. So this is looking north. Apparently you can see Katahdin and Mount Washington from this mountain, but I honestly don't know where they are. This is a pretty big peak over there. So to me that kind of looks like the Bigelows, but it could, I don't know. I'm not even gonna guess, cause I don't know. <laughs> and this would be looking back towards Washington, somewhere who knows i think all of these are a little too close to be washington but maybe it's looming way back there in that notch who knows either way pretty This is what Joe does when he listens to fish on his headphones. Because I don't want to hear it. <laughs> Ooh, that piano solo. <laughs> well, there is Saddleback, which we came from. Ooh. Now we are on the Horn, kind of a sister peak to Saddleback. Yeah, we're coming up on Junior. 
And next is Saddleback Junior. I believe there's Junior right down there. Still wish I knew where Katahdin was. I mean, in theory, that almost looks like the outline of it over there. But if I had to guess, I would say it's more this way. Yeah. And there's something back there that could be it, but I don't think so. I think it's too far. If my, my best guess is it's this crazy little hump way out there. Because it is pretty isolated. Lunch today, it's a leftover pancake from the cabin, and some leftover potatoes from the cabin. That's it. Spam and chips. <laughs> Spam and chips. And some Trail Magic chips that we got. Oh, and... Bah, 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 bah. And someone packed out a Coke. <laughs> Trail Magic Coke. Now we're on Saddleback Junior. You can see these are the other ones we came over. Saddleback, the horn, and yeah, it's been a long day so far. I mean, it hasn't really been that long, but it feels like it's been a long day. And somewhere out there is our future, our destiny. the sun touches. Well, it rained last night, and it's supposed to rain later today, and we've looked at the forecast, and it's supposed to rain for the next two weeks, almost every single day. So, here we are, and it's freezing cold. <laughs>
Well, these are going to be our views for the next two weeks. <laughs> Beautiful. Well, we're pushing hard to get to town today, <laughs> so this is Tara's lunch. Yeah, Spam, Lay's original chips, and below there is some leftover also potatoes <laughs> <laughs> and garlic and stuff. So I'm gonna mush it and chew on the road. <laughs> it was your suggestion. Hey everybody, it's Joe. I wanted to chime in here and give you some context for this segment of the video as we didn't do a great job of documenting it audibly while we were on trail. So when Tara and I got into Stratton, Maine, we were faced with a pretty big choice. We had been really cold with the weather and it was only getting colder. We didn't really have sufficient layers for what we were going through. And the forecast for the area we were headed into called for snow and a lot of rain. We also looked ahead at the forecast for Katahdin and for the next month, it basically looked like really bad weather with some snow and ice, and then there was this one shining day that had clear skies and beautiful weather that was about three days away from now. So we decided we could either continue north with the tight deadline to make it to Katahdin, or we could actually flip up to Katahdin right now, catch it on a beautiful day, and hike south back to where we left off in Stratton without the pressure of trying to get to Katahdin on time. This just seemed to make sense for us, and we figured the hitch up to Millinocket from here would be tough, but fun. And it definitely was. Well, Maine is certainly not an easy state to travel through, so our goal for the first day was to make it east about two hours towards Bangor, Maine, from which we could head north on the interstate and make it up to Millinocket pretty quickly. Two hitches in, and we arrived in Kingsfield, Maine, where this lovely lady and a 50% off outlet store allowed us to load up on some winter gear. I ended up getting this R2 fleece and Tara got a fleece and we got some hats and gloves and we left that store much warmer than we had come in. From Kingsfield our next hitch took us a little bit further east over to Skowhegan, Maine where we had a pretty funny sequence of events happen. So it was getting to be late evening as we were trying to hitch out of Skowhegan and we probably had 30 minutes before the sun went down. And as we were trying to hitch two police cars pulled up beside us and called us over. And at this point, we were pretty nervous. We weren't sure if we were breaking a law or about to get in trouble, but it turns out that they were super friendly and basically just said, you can hitch here, you just can't hitch after dark. And because it was getting so late, they offered us a ride to a local cheap motel where we stayed for the night and they left the sheriff's number for us who said he could give us a ride in the morning. So when morning rolled around, we called up the sheriff and he actually gave us a ride way out of his way, about an hour out of town, two towns over towards Bangor, to a place where we could actually get a much better hitch. And yeah, you might say he was just getting us out of his jurisdiction maybe, but actually he was really nice and it was really cool to get to know him on the ride over and find out his whole life story, which is really interesting. From there, we ended up actually getting a hitch on a truck, which was completely unexpected and has never happened in the history of all of my hitching and probably won't happen again because most trucks aren't allowed to give hitches. But we got a hitch in this 18-wheeler that got us into Bangor proper. It was really cool to get to ride that high on the road and see what it's like to be behind the wheel of an 18-wheeler. 
After getting out of the truck, we were lucky enough to get a hitch all the way from Bangor up to Millinocket thanks to a local high school student who said he had nothing better to do. It was cool to get to hear what his life as a student in Maine was like, and we left him with a little pocket change for the gas, and he left us by peeling out of the parking lot and earning a few furious looks from the local Millinocket people. After getting dropped off in town, we headed to the grocery store and resupplied for the 100 mile wilderness and for our Katahdin summit. Then we headed over to the AT Lodge to stay for the night. Now if you don't know, the AT Lodge is a really cool hostel up in Millinocket that's been run, run there for quite some time by Old Man and Navigator, and they have really become an essential resource in that area for the trail. They provide a lot of services to hikers, and they're pretty cool too. Of course, we had to eat at the AT Cafe, where we signed our names on the 2019 hiker tile. And I actually got to find my old tile from 2012 as well, and I found my name up there. Now, you might not know, after I hiked in 2012, in 2013 I came back and actually worked at Baxter State Park for the season. And I was the AT steward up there, which meant that I welcomed the through hikers into the park and told them where to camp and what the rules were and it was a lot of fun. I lived in a cabin and hiked about two miles to work every day and just <laughs> lived out in the woods. It was pretty cool. I would love to go back there. But yeah, that about wraps up this video. In the next video, we'll be summiting Katahdin and heading south through the 100 mile wilderness. And while I'm doing this voiceover, I wanted to say thank you to all of you who have been watching these videos. They've been getting more views than ever, and it's just really cool to be able to share this and do it in this way. And I can't wait to get back on trail and keep making these videos. <laughs>